I guess first order business is how was this draft, Mike? I mean, how how was it for you to conduct it? It was so obviously out of the ordinary. Yeah, I mean, it, it obviously uh, there were challenges out there for all 32 teams, and that's all that really mattered and to our organization was that we're all on equal footing, and I think that was important. Uh, and so starting from the time where we had to leave, leave the facilities all the way through the draft itself, you know, we put a lot of pressure on, on our IT people, our analytics people, um, our video people, and I thought everybody just ra- rose to the occasion. We got the work done that was necessary to evaluate, and then I thought draft weekend went off without a hitch, and you start talking about how many people were, were remote and how many connections had to be made, and it, it just, I thought, I didn't see a whole lot of it on television, but what I was told was everything went seamlessly. And, you know, we got through it, and I, I think every team felt really good about it, Rich. Well, I spoke to two of your colleagues this week already, and Howie Roseman in Philly and John Elway yesterday in Denver, and both of them seemed to think that it did take a while for everyone to get used to it. And Howie in particular said he thought that there were fewer trades maybe Thursday and Friday because people were still kind of getting used to used to it. Elway said at one point it was difficult to have a private conversation. He kind of had to step away from Zooming and all of that stuff. And that Saturday is when things felt a little bit normal. Would you agree with that assessment? Uh, you know what? Thursday night we, we were on the phone a lot. And uh, I don't really believe – the technology or the remoteness of the situation affected us at all. And um, I'll tell you, for five or six straight nights prior to the draft, uh, we were practicing. You know, we were we were zooming. We had our trade guys in different parts of the country. We had our scouts calling in and trying to overwhelm our phone lines just to make sure we could handle both the phone lines and the video lines. And uh, it it worked out pretty well. So I, I you know, there could. I think the one thing, Rich, is you kind of felt like once you got to a certain point left on the clock, you had to hurry because it wasn't like everybody was in the same room together. If you're trying to make a trade and you were down to about two and a half minutes, three minutes, you were trying to get it done because uh, you still had to facilitate huh. to go through the trade line to the NFL. You had to call the kid that you were trading for or drafting. You know, there was a lot going on that typically would happen a lot easier, but I, I, I feel like the reality of it, it, it went off without a hitch. And then I also just, you know, from our years together, I knew uh, that everything's an evaluation for you. How would you evaluate Gruden's handling of the IT? Because a lot of people thought he might be the guy who talks into his mouse, not, you know, figure that stuff out. How was, how was Gruden in your evaluation, <laughs> Mike? <laughs> That was great, man. We had fun. I mean, we're two dinosaurs, and you know, we're we're now about an hour apart. And we're, you know, at first, the week before, John was like, "I don't want to be on that Zoom thing. I want to be on a phone with you, Mike." And then you do all the Zoom stuff. And then we had a couple practice mock drafts that went off without a hitch. And he was like, "Yeah, that's not too bad. That that was kind of cool." And you know. John gets to the point and he starts to embrace it, and then he's really funny. So it, it went well. That's good because I guess Caliendo could have just stepped in at any point in time, you know. <laughs> I heard he did, apparently. Right? <laughs> no doubt about that. Hey, you watched all the way to the end. Thanks for that. Watch more right here.